Brian Mulroney, a giant of Canadian politics, has died at the age of 84. His daughter shared the news on social media. Canada's 18th Prime Minister led two successive majority governments under the Progressive Conservatives from 1984 to 1993. He negotiated NAFTA, introduced the GST, and pushed for major constitutional reforms. He also fought against apartheid and acid rain and left office deeply unpopular. Chief political correspondent Rosemary Barton takes a look back at his life, at his time in office, and why he evoked such strong emotions for so many Canadians. His very first foray into politics to become leader of the Progressive Conservative Party brought him a bitter loss. He channeled that bitterness into another leadership run seven years later. That time, he won handily. And renewed the Progressive Conservative Party of Canada with the largest majority in Canadian history at the time. Brian Mulroney created deep loyalties with those around him in unifying the party. Some of those loyalties were later tested and lost. Mulroney came from the small town of Bécomo on the north shore of the St. Lawrence River. Remote and isolated, he grew up in an Irish Catholic family, the son of an electrician at the local paper mill. But his ordinary upbringing was quickly overtaken by his extraordinary life. A close friendship with then U.S. President Ronald Reagan, what many saw as an attempt to change the relationship between Canada and the United States. And a first step towards a free trade agreement between the two countries, something Mulroney had initially opposed. In fact, free trade became the center point of Mulroney's pivotal second federal election in 1988. Our message is clear. Canada is open for business again. Bitterly fought, it became about Canadian patriotism. You've sold us out. I happen to believe that once you... Mr. And Turner, just, 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 just one second. Second. Once any you nation, do not, you do not have a monopoly what? on patriotism. What? What? And I resent what? the fact that your implication that only you are a Canadian. Mulroney won his second majority, leaving him lots of room to move forward with bold and potentially controversial ideas, including bringing in the much-disliked GST. We are doing it because it is right for Canada. It must be done. As a son of La Belle Province, Mulroney also made promises to recognize Quebec as a distinct society. And he sought to complete something his predecessor and political nemesis Pierre Trudeau failed to do. Attempt to win Quebec's signature on Canada's repatriated constitution. That kicked off years of negotiations with the provinces, starting with the Meech Lake Accord. But as it moved towards ratification, some provincial governments had now changed and were suddenly no longer on board. I believe it's about time that you allow the Aboriginal people to be heard. A one-day meeting turned into a week-long, last-ditch effort to save the agreement that ultimately failed. It's a sad day for Canada. This was all about Canada, about the unity of our country. The disappointment turned to anger from some conservative Quebec MPs who left to form the Bloc Québécois, including one of Mulroney's close friends, Lucien Bouchard. Mulroney never forgave him. And Western Canadians, too, began to feel left out, leading Preston Manning to create the Reform Party, both leading to damaging splits within the Conservative movement down the road. Mulroney's second attempt to get Quebec to sign on to the Constitution came in the form of the Charlottetown Accord. It also failed in 1992 after being put to a referendum. It was the end of a quarter century of constitutional reform in this country, and it was more fodder for those who simply were ready to move on from the Mulroney era. Yet, he still had work to do. If there are not fundamental changes in South Africa, we are prepared to invoke total sanctions against that country and its repressive regime. Pressuring international partners to denounce the apartheid in South Africa and free Nelson Mandela. It won Mulroney worldwide praise and a visit from a grateful and free Mandela just months after his release. Mulroney signed the Acid Rain Accord with the United States in 1991, earning him kudos from environmentalists. But Canada had wearied of Mulroney after a turbulent nine years, and he left politics in 1993. I always tried to do what I thought would be right for Canada in the long term, not what could be politically popular in the short term. What followed was the start of a long Liberal reign. His successor, Kim Campbell, managed to win only two seats. 
His years after politics were marked with some embarrassing legal battles, including questions about his relationship with the German businessman Karl Heinz Schreiber, resulting in an inquiry. Mulroney did admit to accepting a quarter of a million dollars from Schreiber for consulting. I was fighting for my life and the honor of my family. The inquiry found the former Prime Minister's dealings with Schreiber were inappropriate and not ethical. Mulroney called it the worst mistake of his life and set to rebuild his reputation. Conservatives once again sought his counsel or his blessing, and the Liberal successor to his old foe, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, counted on his advice during negotiations around NAFTA 2.0. Even in the moments when Mulroney knew he was strongly disliked by many Canadians for his decisions, he believed strongly in why he was doing it. In the fullness of time, history and a more reflective nation will tell us whether our hopes for the ultimate success of these policies were in fact realized. Mulroney marked the history of this country time and time again. And now in his passing, Canadians may reflect on just how much he gave and how much he changed their country. Rosemary Barton reporting. From friends to former foes and everyone in between, the list of those coming forward to share their memories of Brian Mulroney is nearly endless. Rafi Bujikanian now with just some of those tributes. Prime Minister, great to see you. One of Brian Mulroney's oldest opponents, but Jean Chrétien revealed shouting across the political divide was years behind them. I talked on him on the phone in the last few months, a few times about his health and his, um, his mood and, you know, I was patting his back. And we tend, when we talk privately like that, to talk about memories that we share. And as I said earlier, we have many coming from both from rural Quebec. Not just home for them, but a key part in Mulroney's big bet in coming to power. He took the Conservative Party in very bad shape. You know, they had not been in government since in the 30s. And he built it back. But his greatest success was to break in Quebec. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was his argument when he ran. And it turned out to be right. Prime Minister Trudeau, who saw Mulroney last summer at one of his last public events, also praised them and noted how he has relied on his advice far past when Mulroney held office. He was incredibly generous and effective in advising me and our government on the renegoti renegotiation of NAFTA uh, during some very challenging years where not just the advice and strategic counsel he gave me and us, but also active with uh, his contacts as part of Team Canada to make sure that the messages on how important the friendship and the relationship between Canada and the U.S. was, not just for Canada but the U.S., was key. And deeply so by one of his former MPs who visited him in Florida last weekend. He was very weak, but already at that time, he, he said to me, you know, I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to finish the year. And I tried to convince him of the contrary, telling him, listen, you, you know, this is the 40th anniversary of the election of his government. And, uh, and that he had in front of him uh, a number of events that we needed to organize to celebrate his legacy. The party's current leader posted his thoughts. I will always be thankful for his candid advice and generous mentorship to me personally, Pierre Polièvre said. He unleashed free enterprise, crushed inflation, restored fiscal sanity and concluded one of the greatest free trade agreements the world has ever seen. That legacy's importance echoed by Trudeau. He shaped our past, but he shapes our present and he will impact our future as well. Rafi Boudjikani on CBC News, Ottawa.